Inexplicable, strange, frightening things are constantly happening in the world that no one can explain. And today Top F will tell you one of those stories. This mysterious mystical story began in August 1977 in the most ordinary area of London. Researchers are still debating whether the Enfield poltergeist was a real manifestation of supernatural powers or a fraud that a very smart 11-year-old girl came up with. Let's figure it out. Get your popcorn ready, we're starting. Riotous Furniture On the evening of August 30th, Peggy Hodgson, a single mother of four, heard a crash coming from the bedroom of her daughters, 13-year-old Margaret and 11-year-old Janet. Peggy was very surprised the girls never gave her trouble and did not arrange loud games. When the woman entered the bedroom, she saw that the sounds were made by a heavy oak chest of drawers, which itself was moving along the floor. The frightened Mrs. Hodgson grabbed the children in her arms and rushed to the neighbors Vic and Peggy Nottingham. Mr. Nottingham first went on a reconnaissance trip to the Hodgson house himself. He really wanted to see the self-propelled piece of furniture. Very soon, the pale man returned and called the police. According to him, strange sounds were heard from every corner of the building. Soon a police car arrived. Constable Carolyn Hips, who later spoke with reporters, said that she and her partner did not find strangers in the house but they saw a levitating chair that rose a centimeter above the floor, flew a meter, and then fell. Since the flying furniture was outside the competence of the police, law enforcement officers left. The ghost of a dead old man. After the first incident, manifestations of the supernatural became permanent. Strange knocking was constantly heard from behind the walls, things moved around the house as if they had their own wool, voices were heard in the rooms, which whispered something unintelligibly, then shouted out some words. Peggy, not understanding what to do now, decided to turn to the newspapers. Reporters rushed into the house, one of them, correspondent and photographer of the Daily Mirror, Graham Morris, practically settled with the Hodgsons. He claimed that he saw objects flying around the room, and somehow the camera that Morris installed in the bedroom took a picture showing Janet floating in the air. The youngest daughter, Peggy, got the most. Things usually levitated in her presence. She herself was often thrown around the room like a doll by the poltergeist. Sometimes the girl fell into a trance and began to speak in a low male voice. Janet admitted that all the mysticism in the house began after she and her sister had fun with the Ouija board, causing ghosts, but why the supernatural forces chose her as their target remained unknown. For reporters in Enfield began to come mediums from all over the country. With their help, Mrs. Hodgson managed to find out that Janet was possessed by the spirit of Bill Wilkins, who used to live in the house and died of a brain hemorrhage. After the ghost told about this, Wilkins' relatives were found, who confirmed that the story was true. There is even a video where it is recorded how the girl begins to speak in the voice of an old man. Over 18 months, more than 30 people, including neighbors, psychics, and reporters, confirmed that they saw heavy furniture move on its own, various objects fly around the room, and Janet rose several feet into the air. It all ended in 1978 after the priest performed a purification ceremony in the Hodgson house. Despite the testimony of witnesses, recordings of Janet's trances and photographs of her levitating, people still argue whether the Enfield poltergeist actually existed. The girl could pretend, the pictures show how she jumps in front of the camera, the journalist must have inflated the story of the paranormal because it is beneficial to the newspaper, there are enough arguments in favor of the version of deception. It is still unknown what happened in the Hodgson house. Maybe a ghost really appeared there, but it is possible that Janet, who liked to be in the spotlight, came up with the whole story. 
The infield story turned out to be a mystery without a solution, and therefore it still inspires writers and directors to create new films and books. Investigation Members of the Society for Psychical Research, Maurice Gross and Guy Lyon Playfair, reported strange whistling and barking sounds coming from Janet. Although Playfair claimed that the ghosts were genuine and wrote in his book This House is Haunted, the true story of the Enfield Poltergeist, 1980, that the entity was the cause of the Enfield accidents, he often doubted the veracity of the children and wondered if whether what happened was a hoax and an exaggeration. However, Gross and Playfair believed that while some of the alleged poltergeist activities were faked by the girls, other incidents were genuine. Other paranormal investigators who studied the case were the American demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren. They visited the Enfield home in 1978 and were convinced there was a supernatural explanation for the events. Janet was caught cheating. A video camera in the next room recorded that the girl was bending spoons and trying to bend an iron rod. Gross noticed Janet tapping the ceiling with her broom handle and hiding his tape recorder. According to Playfair, one of Janet's voices, whom she referred to as Bill, showed a habit of suddenly changing the subject. Janet had the same habit. When Janet and Margaret confessed to reporters about the hoax, Gross and Playfair coerced the girls into retracting their confession, which gave other researchers a reason to ridicule their gullibility. Researcher Renee Haynes noted that doubts about the alleged voice of the poltergeist were raised at the second conference of the International Society for Psychical Research SPR, in Cambridge in 1978, where videotapes of the case were examined. SPR researcher Anita Gregory said the Enfield case was overstated, describing several episodes of the girls' behavior as suspicious, and suggested that they staged some of the incidents to attract journalists looking for a sensational story. John Beloff, former president of the SPR, suggested that Janet practiced ventriloquism. Both Beloff and Gregory came to the conclusion that Janet and Margaret were playing pranks on the researchers. American magician Milbourne Christopher also did a brief investigation during which he did not notice anything that could be called paranormal, but was alert to what he thought were suspicious activities on Janet's part. Christopher later concluded that the poltergeist was nothing more than the prank of a little girl who wanted to cause trouble and was very, very smart. Ventriloquist Alan Ray visited the house and concluded that Janet's male voices were just vocal tricks. Critical Evaluation of Investigations Skeptic Joe Nichol has examined the facts presented by paranormal investigators and criticized them for being too gullible when a supposedly disembodied demonic voice was heard, Playfair noted that, as always, Janet's lips barely moved. He claims that researcher Melvin Harris used a remote-controlled camera that took pictures every 15 seconds to reveal the girl's pranks, and the photographer was not in the room. The photo, which supposedly shows Janet levitating, actually shows her jumping on the bed like on a trampoline. Harris called the photographs examples of the usual gymnastics and said, it's worth remembering that in school, Janet had a good record in physical education. Nikel claimed that the tape recorder malfunction, which Gross attributed to supernatural activity and SPR president David Fontana described as an occurrence which seemed to defy the laws of mechanics, was a kind of thread jamming. This malfunction was present in older models of reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders. He also said that Ed Warren was known for exaggerating and even making up incidents. In 2015, Deborah Hyde commented on the lack of conclusive evidence for the existence of the Enfield poltergeist. The first thing to note is that these events did not occur under controlled conditions. People often see what they expect to see, their feelings are organized and shaped by their previous experiences and beliefs. General Criticism of the Enfield Poltergeist Story 
So skeptics have argued that the alleged poltergeist voice coming from Janet was produced by false vocal folds and had the phraseology and vocabulary of a child. In a television interview with BBC Scotland, it was observed that during the time the claimed disembodied voice was heard, Janet distracted by waving her hand and then covering her mouth with her hand. During the interview, both girls were asked the question, what does it feel like to be chased by a poltergeist? Janet replied, there are no ghosts here, and Margaret interrupted her in a whisper, shut up. These factors have been regarded by skeptics as evidence of deception. As the magician experienced in the dynamics of deception, Nichols studied Playfair's report, as well as newspaper clippings of the time. He noted that the alleged poltergeist tended to act only when he was not being observed, and concluded that the events that occurred were best explained as childish pranks. Although Gross recorded Janet on a tape recorder and believed that there was no deception involved, magician Bob Coady said, he provided me with some tapes, and after listening carefully to them, I came to the conclusion that there was nothing in them that would be for beyond the capacity of the imaginative adolescent. A 2016 Time Out article by psychology professor Chris French described five reasons why he thought it was a prank. Did the Enfield poltergeist exist? There is still no unequivocal opinion on this question. Some say yes, some say no. In this video, we told the story and the facts that were discovered during the investigation, and based on these facts, you can draw your own conclusions. Given the fact that one of the girls was seen deliberately faking the actions of a poltergeist, as well as a large number of inconsistencies and an insufficient evidence base, Top F is inclined to believe that this story is still a fiction. That's all for today, with you was Mr. Top F. Thanks for watching to the end. Subscribe to the channel and like this video if you haven't done it yet. Also, turn on notifications on our channel to catch all new videos. Bye.